Section 7-2, example 2. So let's find the foci of the ellipse defined by 6x squared plus 9y squared equals 144. So if you look back, you might notice in all of the formulas, the other side was always 1. So let's go ahead and divide by 144 so that it, the right side will be 1. So 16x squared plus 9y squared equals 144. Let's divide everything by 144, and then we can check out those formulas. So 16 over 144, I think if you do 144 divided by 16, um, you get 9. So those cancel out to x squared over 9. Um, so then y 9 over 144, those would cancel out to make a 16 if you did 144 divided by 9. And then the right side is 1. So we need to find a squared first. Yeah, we need to find a squared and that'll tell us if it's horizontal or vertical. And then we can find the foci. So I think this is a vertical one because y has the bigger coefficient, the bigger denominator. So that means my b is three because we have x squared over nine is three squared. And then my a is 4. So a is always bigger than b. And 4 is coming from 4 squared is 16. And then I know my foci will go on the y-axis. So the c's will be y values. So we'll get 0 plus or minus c. So let's go ahead and find c, and then we can find the foci. So they will get c squared is a squared minus b squared. So 16 minus 9, which is... 7. So c is the square root of 7. So we'll get 0 root 7 and 0 negative root 7 will be my foci. So you have to determine if you're doing horizontal or vertical first because that affects the foci, right? Horizontal, the vertical, the foci are on the x-axis versus vertical, the foci are on the y-axis. And then we can solve for c. So let's go ahead and find an equation. So now let's be given some information and see if we can find the equation. So we know that the foci, um, we have the equation of ellipse with vertices 0 and 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, negative 4. And then the foci are at 2 and negative 2 for the y values. So that tells me I have a vertical one because the foci are on the y-axis. So it'll make this shape. We just don't know those x values yet. So we'll have x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. Um, the y squared gets the a squared because the foci are on the y-axis. So we know a is equal to 4 from the vertices. And we know c is equal to 2. And we can just, again, use that formula to find b. So c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So we get uh, 4 equals 16 minus b squared. So I'm going to move the b squared, b squared. I don't like the negative b squared. So b squared plus 4 is 16, so I'll go ahead and subtract 4. So b squared is 12. And then I actually don't care what b is since the formula has b squared. So x squared over 12 plus y squared over 16 because a is 4, so a squared is 16 equals 1. And that's the equation of the ellipse. Let's just try one more since we're on a flow. Um, so let's do one more, finding one more equation with slightly different information. So we have the f um, equation of ellipse. We know the foci are at 0 and 8 and 0 and negative 8. So that means C is 8.
Because they're on the y-axis, that means it's a vertical ellipse. So I don't know how far out it goes because we don't know the vertices, but we know um, the foci are somewhere inside of that ellipse. So we know C is eight. And then we also know the eccentricity is four fifths. So this is close to one, so it's a stretched out ellipse. It's not that close to a circle versus one fifth would be closer to a circle. Um, but we learned that E is equal to C over A. And so we know C and we know E, so we could figure out what A is. So 4 fifths is equal to 8 over A. So maybe you can just do quick proportions in your head. So 8 tenths would be the same as 4 fifths. Or you could solve, but 4 fifths is the same as 8 tenths. So A is equal to 10. So that tells me that this was actually going out to 0, 10. The vertices were at 0, 10 and 0, negative 10. Not that that matters, we, but it's nice to kind of check out the graph. So we know so far that our equation is x squared over b squared plus y squared over 100 for 10 squared. All right, a squared will be 10. a will be 10, a squared will be 100 equals 1. So we're just going to figure out what b squared is just like before. So c squared is a squared minus b squared. Maybe you could pause and solve this on your own, but what do we get? We get c is 8, so 64 is c squared equals 100 minus b squared. So I get b squared is 100 minus 64, which is 36. And so the equation just becomes x squared over 36 y squared plus y squared over 100 equals 1. And the 36 is telling me that b is 6. So the x values would go out to, zero, to 6, 0, and 0, and six, negative 6, 0. So not asking for the graph, but I think that helps you understand them well if we just sketch the left and right up and down a lot. But that's our equation.